Hello, thank you for joining me today. My name is Sylvia Black, licensed real estate broker with our affordable homes and apartments. I'm also licensed to preach and ordained as a minister. And I want to thank you for joining me today for Real Estate, Religion, and You, which is every Wednesday, 6.30 to 7 p.m. right here on Time Warner Public Access TV Channel 20. And also on Saturdays from 12.30 to 1 p.m. right here on Time Warner Public Access TV Channel 20. And I want to thank you for joining me today for Real Estate, Religion, and You. You can also hit me up on Facebook, Dr. Sylvia Black. <clears throat> you can also visit my YouTube address for all the videos at uh, sblack3001. And you can also email me at sblack3001 at gmail.com. Thank you for joining me today. Today I would like to talk to you uh, from a subject. I know I said we were going to talk about real estate investment, but I think I might have to alternate every other week. Uh, perhaps maybe some, some of the uh, videos you'll see on YouTube. You may not see them on uh, Time Warner Public Access TV Channel 20. But I want to talk to you on a continued basis of a book that I've written entitled, Vengeance is Mindset, the Lord I Will Repay. And this is available on HighwayToHeavenChurch.net. And again, I want to thank you for joining me today. And I just feel compelled to talk as, um, to, about a topic that uh, is in the book, uh, Vengeance is Mindset, the Lord, which the really book talks about uh, the war, you know, how to fight and the battle, and how to fight and win the battle and the war, waging against us that we fight in the spiritual forces of darkness in the heavenly realms against Satan and all the satanic forces of evil, as well as the devil and himself and all the beasts of the field and all of his workers of iniquity. And again, my name is Dr. Sylvia Black, and I want to thank you for joining me today. I'm available for, for public engagements if you'd like me to come and sing or speak at your organization, and I'd be happy to do so. Now, um, what kind of God do you serve? That's what I want to talk about, and this is in my book, Vengeance is my set the Lord I will repay. This is the old cover. The new t cover had, doesn't have his face on it. I don't want you to think that, you know, because, you know, his, his skin is white, he's in the book, you know, or whatever. <clears throat> I don't want it to see it, think it's a racist thing. So, just, you know, Vengeance is my set the Lord I will repay. And, you know, it talks about, you know, how God is going to get the enemy back for what, you know, they've done to you or what they're doing to you. I know a lot of us, you know, everybody's going through mess and stuff and junk. You know, you can't tell and say that you're not, but a lot of people try to cover it up and, um, you know, make it seem like they're not going through anything. But we know that we are. But I, I was searching in the Bible for answers, and I found a lot of answers which compelled me to write this book. And in this book, I have a lot of scripture in the middle of it uh, that talks about the different wars that went on and the secret to their success and how they won the battle and the war that they waged against the enemy. Uh, and the spiritual forces of darkness in the heavenly realms. And this can also apply to us today. And I, I researched the Bible and I needed answers and I found out so many answers so I said why not just go ahead and put it in a book and you know just uh, you know put it in a book and maybe you know I can help other people you know overcome some of the things that you were, you're dealing with as well as a lot of things that you know m myself that I'm dealing with or that I have dealt with um, we all need help in certain areas of our lives and, you know, of course, I will tell you the story or you can read the story actually of my life um, in another book that I have already written that I'm editing. Uh, but this book here, Vengeance is My Set the Lord I Will Repay, I guess you can figure that I like to write, I like to, I research the Bible and I just got to find answers, you know, because I, sometimes you just can't talk to anybody about a lot of stuff that you're going through, you know, sometimes you just have to just talk to God. and. A lot of times, any answer that you want is can be found right in the Bible. I can guarantee you that. But I want to talk to you from a subject of what kind of God do you serve? And I thought about this title because <clears throat> I put it in my book because I remember I was going through some mess and some stuff and some junk. And, you know, I, you know, started having just a few doubts in my mind. You know, we all have doubts. We're human. And I had some doubts in my mind. I said, you know, Lord, you know, you know, when? You know, when are you going to bless me? When are you going to, you know, do what I've asked you to do for me? You know, how long, Lord? You know, and these questions I started asking God, how long is it going to take before you start blessing me? How long am I going to have to do, you know, what you want me to do? And I remember when I had asked him that, I took matters into my own hands and I sinned. Okay, I went, you know, I had a drink. You know, I had me some, uh, some one of those wine coolers. 
and uh, you know, I, I, as, and I thought to my, as I'm sitting there, of course, God can really only communicate. The only time he really seems like when he communicates with me, and I believe that he will communicate with you in the same fashion, is when you're ready to receive his word. When you're ready to receive his word, then God can communicate with you. In the Bible, it, it states that he communicates to us through dreams and visions. And then when we don't listen uh, to that, or when we don't adhere to his word, then he has to afflict our bodies. You know, so that you become in a position or a place where you have no choice but to listen to God. And a lot of times we think that this is our war that we're waging, but it's not. It's the war against evil forces of darkness in the heavenly realms. We're on the battlefield for the Lord. This is not our battle. It's the Lord's battle. We're His disciples. We're His warriors. You know, we're here for Him to help serve Him, to help deliver the message of righteousness to the people. That's why we, you know, we're His disciples. We're prophets, we're, you know, we're ministers, we're evangelists, um, you know, we're here to deliver the word to the people, whatever, share your testimony, share what you know, what you've learned with God, and this is what I, my way of sharing with you, uh, what I know, um, and I remember that one time I'm sitting there, I relax, I'm relaxed now because I didn't have me a wine cooler, you know, and I'm sitting there chilling, and God says, he asked me the question, he says, he says, do you serve, do you serve God only for what he can do for you? And, uh, you know, I couldn't really find a scripture relevant to what I was t talking about, with the, the exception of um, when I was looking in uh, the Bible, I said, okay, let me get this one scripture. And uh, it's found in the book of 1 Peter chapter 11, uh, chapter, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 11, where it's, and this is the New King James Version, where it says, uh, Beloved, I beg you, as sojourners, uh, and pilgrims abstain from help from fleshly lusts uh, which war against the soul okay I'll read that one more time this is the New King James Version is found in the book of uh, the first epistle of Peter chapter number 2 I'm sorry chapter 2 verse 11 where it says uh, talks about living before the world Okay, and it says, Beloved, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims to abstain from fleshly lusts, uh, which war against the soul. Now, that should seem obvious to a lot of us, you know. If you do, you know, your fleshly lust, if you sin, you know, uh, you know, drinking, smoking, you know, cursing, you know, um, for, uh, uh, fornicating, adultery, you know, or, or cursing, you know, all of these, that's not a lust, but, you know, some people it is. But if we, you know, abstain from fleshly lust, then we're, you know, we're, we're, if you if you give into, excuse me, if you give into the fleshly lust, then you're warring against the soul. Okay, the flesh and the soul are on opposite sides of the battlefield. Okay, the flesh is here and the soul is here. Although it's we're in one body, we're traveling. This is the vehicle in which we're traveling. Okay. Um, I believe that, you know, when you go on to be with the Lord, that your soul looks like your, your body, but it's, it's a pure form. And, of course, another human being that's still living cannot see your spirit, okay? But you know that God is there because we believe and we have faith. And as the Bible says to us that faith is much more, uh, it's more, better than gold and silver and gold. Is as expensive as silver and gold is, it fades away, okay, and it, you know, it turns colors after a while, you know what I mean, it's not, it doesn't last forever, but your faith, my faith, our faith, lasts forever, and that's, your, our faith is much more precious to God than gold, it says it in the Bible, and when we want, when we, we do fleshly things, we war against the soul, now first of all, let's just take a look at a couple of things that God does for us, First of all, he gives us life. Okay, when we were born, you know, he created the womb, so he formulated us in the first place. But when we were born, he created life in us. He gave us, you know, um, you know, for example, take the example of the Valley of Dry Bones. You know, there were bones, and what he did was he breathed air, life into them. Okay, and the same thing he does for us. He breathes life into us. Okay, and helps us, you know, so that we may live. Uh, you're alive, otherwise you wouldn't be listening to this message. That's a gift from God. You can't buy that from uh, with any price for any price for from anybody. <clears throat> it's not for sale. 
Uh, some of the other things, for example, peace. <clears throat> the peace that surpasseth all understanding. Uh, when you're, uh, you know, when the world is pulling their hair out, or, you know, as in the World Trade Center disaster, I'm from New York City, I was in, world, I was in the city at the time, and my friend that came up here with me to Buffalo was working in the World Trade Center building. And he was in, he saw the plane hit building number two. Okay, if you watched, uh, <clears throat> uh, if you watch my YouTube, um, S Black 2001, my YouTube, I have his testimony in there, just a partial testimony that talks about his, you know, uh, he was in one building and he saw the plane hit. He said he had always knew that a uh, plane was going to hit that building or something was going to happen to that building. And the other guy said they was going to wait to hear from their supervisor. He said, right, well, I'll see you later. I'm out of here. And uh, he ran and ran and ran downstairs. There was so much smoke. Nobody couldn't hardly see their way through. And he said he was running and somebody in the jewelry store snatched him in the store and whatnot and pulled him in. And, you know, he said people were dropping wallets and stuff and whatnot. He could have picked up wallets, but people were running for their lives, you know. And the people that didn't make it out were jumping out of the window. Now, they had a choice. Should I stay here and burn up or go or jump out the window? <clears throat> and so they decided to jump out the window and he said he would actually witness their heads busting wide open. I'm gonna get him on I'm gonna have him on uh, one of my shows one day and I will have him to testify and tell you of the goodness of God. That's one of the blessings that God gives us. He protects us from hurt, harm and danger. Okay? Um, now had he you know, someone one of the people in the World Trade Center, they did not have the protection of God. Now, you might think nothing of that, you know, say, oh, well, you know, you might say, oh, it can't happen to me. You'd be walking down the street and you dismiss it from your mind. But once you dismiss it from your mind, the next thing you know, you never know what might happen. Vengeance is mine, said the Lord, I will repay, available on highwaytoheavenchurch.net. Okay, he gives us protection, you know. He gives us uh, beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the spirit of uh, praise for heaviness. Uh, he gives us, like I said, the peace that surpasses all understanding. If your peace is in your money, when you lose your money, you're going to lose your peace. If your peace is in your job, when you lose your job, you're going to lose your peace. Okay, if your peace is in your marriage, when your marriage get broke, breaks up, you're going to lose your peace. Okay, but God gives us the peace that surpasses all understanding. So I ask you again, my brothers and sisters, what kind of God do you serve? Okay, uh, do you serve God just for what he can do for you? Do you serve God, you know, just for what he can, you know, he has in store for you, what he promises that he's going to give us our heart's desires. He's going to bless us with abundance, open up the windows of heaven and pour us out a blessing that we may not have room enough to receive. Is that why you serve God? So you have to examine your reasons for serving him. Why do you preach the word of God in the church? Uh, if you're listening to me, uh, pastor, why do you preach? Do you preach in church because you love God or do you preach? Uh, the word of God so that it can make you look like you know you're somebody special in the eyes of the people you got to remember that it's not our will it's the will of God that is allowing us the ability to be able to do anything that we do and when God allows us that ability to do that he's giving us a blessing now yes yeah I, I say Lord thank you for the money oh yeah thank you God for the money you know what I mean I'm not going to just you know disown that uh, but God's, you know, he, he does so much, so much for us. Even as children, we are blessed. You're not out working on a job. 18 years, you're a child. You're a young adult growing. We're young adults growing. You're at whatever age you are now. Um, you don't have a job. You're not working. You're not supporting yourself. Parents are supporting you. So what blessings do you have now to look forward to as a child? Just look back on your life. As a, as a child, what blessings did you have to look forward to? You got up every day. You were energetic, you were youthful, you were vibrant, you know, you had, you know, you had it going on, you know what I mean? You were in your prime, man. You had your whole life ahead of you when you're a child. And God can give that back to you as an adult. It says in the Bible, in the book of Job, um, which I talked about in one of my other, um, uh, and I'll tell you the scripture. If you holler at a sister on my email, sblack2001, I'll give you the scripture. Um, in the book of Job where it talks about, you know, he speaks to us in dreams and it talks about forgiveness when I was talking about the subject of forgiveness. He talks about, he, he speaks to us in dreams and visions. Okay? He speaks to us in the night when we're sleeping. Okay? He whispers in our ears. And then when you don't listen, I'm paraphrasing, 
But when we don't listen to him, then he afflicts your body. Okay, with sickness and whatnot. Your bones stick out. You don't even have an appetite for the most delicious food, for the food that you love. Okay, and God's, you know, he, he speaks to us. And if you're not going to listen to him, then he's going to say, hey, I'm going to get your attention. You know what I mean? Vengeance is mine, said the Lord, I will repay. Available on highwaytoheavenchurch.net. My name is Dr. Sylvia Black. You can hit me up on Facebook. Visit my YouTube at Black 3001 And don't forget to tune in every Wednesday, 6.30 to 7, right here on Time Warner Public Access TV, Channel 20. And Saturdays from 12.30 to 1 for Real Estate, Religion, and You. My name is Sylvia Black. I'm your host. And thank you for joining me again. What kind of God do you serve? Do you serve God only for what He can do for you? And if you do, I can almost assure you, my brothers and sisters, that you're serving God for the wrong reason. If you're only serving God for what He can do for you, and He's not doing it in your eyes, then you're not, you're not going to get it out of Him. Because you're serving Him for what He can do for you. If you know God knows your heart, He knows what you're really thinking, He, knows, he, he recreated us. You know, He formulated us. The doctors can examine the heart. They can examine uh, the kidneys, the liver, you know, he can, they can examine our minds, our brains. And I commend these doctors for going through the schooling that they do and having the discipline that they have. You know, but my trust is in God first. You know, I mean, some doctors, they say, you know, take this test because you're this age. Or take this test because you're approaching this or whatever. Or take this pill as a preventative measure. Well, hey, look, my trust is in God. If it ain't broke, I ain't going to fix it. And I think it's very unfair for doctors to try to force you to take some medicine or force you to try to do a procedure just because, you know, the world is doing it.